Let's go, LSU football fans. You guys have been wanting more recruiting coverage. So I'm going to give you a really stripped down look ahead for the rest of 2022. And here's what's interesting. As we go through these top five players that Ed Orgeron's after, keep in mind that 12 players are already committed. And that means there's only 12, 13, 14 ish slots left. And there's a reason why I said ish, and I'll save that for the end of the video. So let's start off here with number five, and that is the Louisiana Playmakers. It's actually a group of players that includes Le'Veon Moss, Kendrick Law, Trevor Etienne, and Trevante Citizen, all of which are top 10 playmakers in the state of Louisiana. You could even throw in Jamon Tapp, a great defensive end, and you can also mention Quincy Wiggins, a defensive end that's also gaining some steam in South Louisiana. So, you know, this is where it gets fascinating because there's already so many slots and then you factor in Tap and Wiggins, they're at a position in defensive end that LSU actually is pretty deep and young at, even though that they have two seniors that will be more than likely starting at defensive end next season and Andre Anthony and Ali Gay. Still, you want to get as many pass rushers as you possibly can, including one guy that could be better than all of them. And it gets also interesting with Kendrick Law because we don't know exactly what position he will play. We don't even know what side of the football he will play, but it's trending that he will be an offensive player if he were to go to LSU. And then, of course, you have Moss, Etienne, and Citizen at running back where last season you took two running backs in a recruiting class. The year before, you also had Kevontre Bradford. And so when you factor in Corey Kiner and Armani Goodwin, how many carries are there to go around? So so I put Shaz Preston in his own category at a St. James High School. They just picked up Savian Jones, who is an absolute stud. What makes Shaz very interesting is that he is a top 100 Louisiana wide receiver and coming up I have uh, a few research projects on this very thing but long story short the last seven ish wide receivers that went to LSU that were top 100 players in the 247 composite all of them went to the NFL what makes it interesting is LSU is already backloaded at wide receiver they took five in the last class they took Three already committed in 2022. And number three, the five stars. And here's what's fascinating. LSU's had a mixed bag of success when it comes to recruiting out-of-state five stars. So what makes this tough is it's so hard to tell where a five star is going to go because they legit have every school offering them. Walter Nolan, obviously a defensive tackle, is very interesting and you're going to see I'm going to put an emphasis on the trenches when it comes to five stars because LSU has such a big need in the trenches Walter Nolan from Tennessee uh, an area that uh, Austin Thomas has dominated in over the years when he was at LSU you get Zach Rice a guy that's on LSU's radar Denver Harris a five-star corner that also has LSU in his top schools Shamar Stewart as we've said in the past, is the more likely candidate out of any out-of-state five-star to commit to LSU, uh, a five-star in out of Florida. And then you have Devon Campbell at a huge position of need. He has LSU listed in his top eight. And then you could continue here with Keon Sab, who's fascinating when it comes to LSU. Kamari Wilson, a five-star safety at IMG Academy. And both of them are actually out of IMG. And LSU's history with IMG prospects is actually pretty fruitful in recent years with Elias Ricks and Grant Delpit. So yeah, I, I would consider LSU in the running for that. And then of course, there's Kelvin Banks, a five-star offensive tackle. So obviously, Will Campbell, Walker Howard are five stars that are already committed. It would be nice to get a few more. So, you know, it's kind of a long shot because five stars are so tough to get, but you never doubt Ed Orgeron. He's, he's going to, I think more than likely, he's going to find a way to get one of the out-of-state five stars to commit to him, maybe even before next season begins. So my number two guy is not as highly rated as anyone we've mentioned thus far, 
But there is a reason why I have him so high on my list. And that is Emory Jones at a Catholic High in Baton Rouge. Now, why? Why would you have a guy that's not in the top 200? Everyone else that we've mentioned are top 200 type of guys. Why do you have Emory Jones rated so high? Well, it's because of position and proximity. He is an offensive tackle in the state of Louisiana, a position that has struggled to, or a state that has struggled to produce great offensive linemen in recent years. This class should be different with, obviously, Bo Borderline committed and then Will Campbell committed. But what makes Emory Jones so fascinating is that he is at such a high position of need. Now, I see some people list him as a tackle or guard, It really doesn't matter because LSU needs depth all across the offensive line. And I do want to tease our Sunday night film study. It's going to be fantastic. And the reason why I want to tease that is very simple. Um, You will see why LSU needs to build depth on the offensive line with their backups as much as they do their starters. The backup LSU offensive line had a really, 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 really rough day uh, in the spring game. Now, it was just one spring game, and Jaqueline Roy is a really good player, but it was all the backup defensive linemen having a field day against that backup offensive line. So LSU drastically needs numbers at that position, and obviously better development and just better play overall, and Emory Jones will help with all of that. So yes, he is a really good prospect, But the need at offensive line is so glaring. Keep this in mind. The guys that are slated to be the starters next season, most of them will not be back in 2022. So that includes Liam Shanahan, Ed Ingram, Austin Deculus. Those are three starters just off the top of your head, and there's no telling what's going to happen at right guard and what's going to happen with Dan Rosenthal at left tackle. Numbers, numbers, numbers. You desperately need to recruit this offensive line and because Emory Jones is a Louisiana offensive lineman it's been so hard for LSU to get out-of-state offensive linemen yes they already have Lucas Taylor committed but they really do need not only Emory Jones to commit they really need one of these other five-star offensive tackles to commit as well and then at number one we do have Jacoby Matthews and I understand this is not the biggest position of need LSU just had an amazing recruiting haul at safety in the class before. And I would like Durante Jones's chances of getting another safety not named Jacoby Matthews, but he's a five-star defensive back in the state of Louisiana. You look at the last five-star recruits at LSU, and every single five-star defensive back hit, and every single five-star out of the state of Louisiana has hit in the past decade. And Jacoby Matthews is in both of those categories. Now, I know some people view him more as a linebacker. Some, I mean, he plays quarter, he does it all at Ponchatoula High School. Some people even say he's better on offense. But, you know, he projects as a defensive player. And look, um, I I understand his recruitment is not going to be the easiest. He is very interested in all these other schools. But still, he is just a special, special, special playmaker. And this is just such, you know, a huge position of need safety as we move forward. The things that you desperately need um, in, in this new era of college football, you need as many guys that can cover their other fast guys on offense in space. And Jacoby Matthews is obviously one of those guys. And the last five-star safety they had named Jacoby turned out to be pretty daggum good. So, I'll leave it at that. So a few things to keep in mind that Austin Thomas will have to keep in mind. There's only going to be a certain amount of slots left in this class. They already have 12 prospects committed. So of the prospects left, that means that there's only 13 slots, potentially 14 slots left to go. And that's where numbers become an issue because what if a five-star says, okay, I do want to go to LSU, you're going to have to keep that room open. So keep that in mind because numbers now are even more valuable because of the immediate transfer portal rule that was just passed. Because prospects, I say prospects, because players now can be immediately eligible, 
it would be wise moving forward to keep quite a few slots open, maybe three or four, to address in the portal, and maybe two, three, it just depends. So keep that in mind as well, because we are seeing a lot of really good players enter the portal because they do have more freedom to move. And on top of that, over the next two years, LSU is going to be docked for scholarships uh, in each season. It'll go down to 81 in 2022 and then down to 77 because of the self-imposed sanctions LSU has put on itself because of the Odell and Vidal Alexander thing. So keep that in mind when it comes to 2022. There's all these unprecedented things that LSU will have to deal with. Now, if you're watching this on a premiere tonight, I will be on the Fantasy Football Card Quest. I get a lot of questions about cards because we give out so many. This is actually a cheaper Joe Burrow rookie card that I have that I pulled out of a pack. So I will be going through what you should look for when it comes to LSU rookies. Uh, Andy's one of my favorite YouTube card content creators. And if you can't catch it live, it'll be available on his channel later. So uh, we actually did a video on this very thing. It involved Eric Gilbert and one potential wide receiver LSU could get in the portal right now. And you could watch it right here. Just click on this floating video, okay? It is power, our LSU, boom. I think we're doing some low main tonight. Let's go.